Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In the previous class, we have discussed about the female reproductive part of the flower that is called pistil or gynoecium. And you know that pistil comprising of three main parts, namely stigma, style and ovary. Ovary is the basal swollen portion of the gynoecium. Let us draw a simple diagram of the pistil or gynoecium. So this is uh, the pistil which is mainly comprising of three parts namely stigma, the elongated portion called style and the basal swollen portion called as ovary. And within the ovary there are many ovarian, uh, many, uh, ovarian cavity called as locules, ovarian cavity is called as locules and within the locules there is a parenchymatous tissue or a parenchymatous cushion. And ovary also encloses many structural units called as carpels. These carpels are similar to megasporophylls that we have studied in the previous class. And this ovary comprising of locules and the parenchymatous cushions called as placenta from which the ovules will be arising. The ovules are also called as megasporangia which usually arising from the placenta which is usually attached to the wall of the ovary. So in this class we are going to study about the structure of ovule which are also called as megasporangium. So megasporangium can also be called as ovule both are same. It is one of the important question. You will be studying about the megasporangium even in your practical class also. Let us talk about the megasporangium in daytime. So as you know the megasporangium or ovules are usually arising from the placenta which is attached to the wall of the ovary and these ovules, these ovules after fertilization they develops into seeds, they develops into seeds, whatever the seeds you can observe in a fruit they are nothing but ovules. Ovules after fertilization they develop into seeds. So all these processes we will be studying later. We just remember the ovules develop into seeds only after fertilization. And there are different types of ovules. Actually, there are different types of ovules, namely autotropous ovule, anatropous ovule, amitropous ovule, ampitropous ovule, compyotropous ovule. Sarcinotropous ovule. So these are the different types of ovules, but here it is not required to study all these types of ovules. Only we are discussing about the anatropous ovule. So why only we need to study about the anatropous ovule? Because we are studying about the flowering plants. In case of flowering plants, the most common type of ovule is anatropous ovule. So in this class, let us talk about the anatropous ovule. So this is the areas of ovule. It is nothing but the longitudinal section of the ovule. Here we have not taken the transverse section. It is the longitudinal section of the ovule, usually which is a anatropous ovule. So the different types of ovules you will, you will be studying later. In this class, we are talking only about the anatropous ovule. So just look at the diagram. So this is a typical anatropous ovule and the typical anatropous ovule mainly comprising of two parts namely this region is called as stalk and the remaining portion is called as body. A typical anatropous ovule has two parts namely stalk and body. The stalk of the ovule is called as a funicle. The stalk of the ovule is called as a Funicle and the remaining portion is called as the body of the ovule. This body of the ovule it is attached to this stalk at a region called as a hilum. Hilum is the region where the body of the ovule is attached to this stalk that is a funicle. So we can say hilum is the point of attachment of the body of the ovule to the funicle. Should remember hilum it is the point of attachment of body of the ovule to the funicle. And due to the fusion of this body of the ovule to this funicle, a ridge will be formed. 
So what I have drawn in the red color, it is a, a ridge formed by the fusion of the body of the ovio with the phenicol that is called raphe. Raphe, it is the ridge formed by the fusion of body of the ovio with the phenicol. Then this body of the ovio is surrounded by two protective layers. So the body of the ovio is surrounded by two protective coverings or layers called as integuments. In case of gymnosperms, only one integument will be present. That's why in gymnosperms it is called as unitegmic ovule. But here we can say it is a bitegmic ovule because there are two integuments surrounding the body of the ovule. Integuments are the protective layers surrounding the body of the ovule. You just have a look. The integuments will be covered completely ovule, completely all around the except a small opening. This small opening is called as a micropyle. It is very important. Micropyle is the region where the integuments not cover the ovule. You can observe. So integuments you can find everywhere except this region. So this opening is called as a micropyle. There is an importance of micropyle that we will study later. And the exact opposite in the opposite region of the micropyle is called as a chalaza. Opening, micropyle. The exact opposite region of the micropyle is called as a chalaza, which represents the basal part of the ovule and from which the ovules will be arising. So the ovule, uh, the, sorry, the integuments will be arising. The integuments usually arising from the chalazal part. That's why it, I said it is the basal part of the and the inner integument, so this is the outer integument, this is the inner integument. The inner integument encloses a parenchymatous mass of tissue. The green colored tissue, what you can see, it is the parenchymatous tissue which is usually called as mucellus. The term mucellus is very important because many of them are gets confused with the term. They will write a nucleus instead of mucellus. It is completely wrong. It is a mucellus. It is a parenchymatous mass of tissue present within the ovule is called as mucellus. And this mucellus encloses a female gametophyte called as embryo sac. The mucellus encloses a female gametophyte called as embryo sac. Then the question arises, why embryo sac is called as a female gametophyte? You already know that the male gametophyte, which is the male gametophyte, it is usually a pollen grain. Then why pollen grain is called as male gametophyte? It produces male gametes. Similarly, the embryo sac is called as a female gametophyte. So embryo sac is called as a female gametophyte because it produces a female gamete and that female gamete is called as egg. That we will be studying a little later. So embryo sac, it is the female gametophyte present within the new cellulose and it produces a female gamete and it is called as a female gametophyte. Let us see what are all the cells which are present inside this embryo sac. So within the embryo sac, towards the micropyla region, you can find three cells. You can find three cells in the, the large central cell is called as egg. We can write egg cell or egg. So there is a large central cell called as egg cell and there are two pear shaped cells called as synergies on either side of the egg. Try to remember, towards the micropyla region, within the embryo sac, there are three cells in that the larger one is called as egg cell, which is the female gamete, which is the female gamete. And two pear shaped cells on either side to the egg are called as synergies. These two together it is called as egg apparatus. One egg cell and two synergies together it is called as egg apparatus. You may get a question about egg apparatus. Write a note on egg apparatus. So egg apparatus, it is a group of three cells which are usually present towards the micropylar region which contains a larger central cell called as egg which is the female gamete and there are two pear shaped cells called as synergies. And within this embryo cell, towards the chalazal region, we can find another three cells called as antipodals. The three cells which are present towards the chalazal end are called as antipodals and in the middle of the embryo cell we can find two nuclei which are called as 
polar nuclei. In the middle, there are two nuclei called as a polar nuclei. Initially, the two nuclei are called as a polar nuclei. Later, these two polar nuclei, these two polar nuclei fuse to form one nuclei, which will be a diploid in nature. Why it is diploid? Because a haploid. Two haploid polar nuclei fuse to form one diploid secondary nucleus. So initially they are called as a polar nuclei. Later these two polar nuclei fuse to form a diploid secondary nucleus that we will be studying later. So this is uh, the embryo sac. So embryo sac usually it is a uh, matured embryo sac is called as a seven celled embryo sac. So why it is seven celled? Here we can find the three cells towards the micropylar region and three cells towards the chalazal region and this one the central cell. A one large central cell will be present. So three plus three and one it is a seven celled embryo sac. A matured ovule usually contains a seven celled embryo sac. Yeah, this is about the structure of megasporangium or ovule. Let us recall a few points about the structure of ovule. A typical anatropous ovule has two parts, stalk as well as body. The stalk of the ovule is called as a funicle. This body of the ovule is attached to funicle, a region called as a hilum. Due to the fusion, a, there will be a formation of rays. This ridge is called as a raphe. And the body of the ovule is surrounded by two protective layers called as integuments. The integuments will be covering the ovule all over except a small opening called as a micropyle. And the exact opposite region of the micropyle is called as a chalaza from which the integuments will be arising. The inner integument encloses a parenchymatous mass of tissue called as mucellus. And this mucellus encloses the female gametophyte called as embryo sac. And this embryo sac contains three cells towards the micropylar region called as egg apparatus. And this egg apparatus consists of one large central egg cell and two pear shaped synergies on either side. And we can find three cells towards the chalazal end are called as antipodals. In the middle, there are two polar nuclei. Later, they fuse to form a diploid secondary nucleus and a matured embryo sac is a seven-celled embryo sac. So, this is about the structure of ovule. And in the next class, we are going to study about the development of embryo sac. Because here we have not discussed how this female gametophyte is formed, how the female gamete is formed, we have not discussed here. We will be studying.